year 2020, China became the largest trading partner of the European Union. The China-EU Geographical Indications Agreement went into force. Both China and European Union agreed to set up a high-level dialogues at Deputy Prime Minister level. China and European Union have managed to conclude on schedule the negotiations on the Comprehensive Agreement on Investment. According to uh, European uh, Chamber of Commerce here in China, over 60% of the EU enterprises here based in China, they would like to increase their investment here. We cannot base our adjustment on the false information. For the sake of the world, European Union and China can work together to solve the hotspot issues in the world. Last year is unprecedented. People suffered a great deal because of the COVID-19, because of the downward economy, because of the lockdown of some of the cities, people have to stay home. Despite all that, I have to say, the relations between China and the European Union have made a lot of progress. Last year, which shows the trade relations between China and European Union have been very active. In March this year, the China-EU Geographical Indications Agreement went into force. The Italian ham, vinegar, and sparkling wine will be protected under that agreement. Now turning to this year, the year 2021, I see two challenges ahead of us. Number one is the global efforts against COVID-19, the virus. As we all know, both China and European Union are accelerating our efforts for vaccination of our population so that they will eventually to be protected. And the second challenge is to fully recover the world economy. That is very, very difficult, not only because uh, we have to fight the virus, on the other hand, the production chains and the supply chains have been broken here and there. Now, let me share with you some of the information in China. We have completed 38,000 kilometers of a high-speed railway and 150,000 kilometers of expressway. We have built already the world's largest fiber and mobile communication networks. In addition to that, 5G, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and industrial internet. So we believe with these new technologies and newly built infrastructure, the traditional industry will be empowered. This year is the first year of the 14th five-year plan. We are entering new stage. And we have to guide our development with the new theories. We have two commercial markets, externally and internally. In internationally, uh, we, we have a big business circle. We say circulation, outer circulation. And internal consumption is considered the internal circulation of consumption in the business. And the difference is that the internal circulation consumption will be boosted. It will take the lead of the way for the Chinese economy. There will be more opportunities not only for Chinese business people, but for foreign investors and the foreign business people. And last majority, vast majority of the European enterprises 
they still consider China as one of the primary choices for investment. So as far as China is concerned, we are going to open wider to the outside world, continue to shorten the negative lists for investments, and we'll open up more to, ch to outside world, including the service industry. And we're trying to improve the business environment. We may touch upon political correctness or ideological differences. Uh, it sounds rather depressing that we have some problems. However, people in different countries with different cultures, different social systems, do not have to fight over each other. I mentioned the comprehensive agreement on investment. We just concluded negotiations last year. China, EU have a different social system, different ideologies, different culture. But we managed to sit down to iron out our differences to reach consensus on investment. Another good example is a recently uh, uh, concluded agreement called RCEP. That's Regional or Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. This agreement involves China and 10 country, 10 ASEAN countries, Japan, South Korea, Australia, and New Zealand. If you look at these countries, they are all different. They are different from China. Many countries have different social systems. That is so different from China. But we managed to, to work together. What we need to do is to have consultations with the mutual respect for each other's core interests and the concerns. China is important part of the world production chain and supply chain. And we will do our part to promote the world economy and the trade. And we will defend the multilateral trade agreement based on WTO rules and regulations. We are open and have a positive approach. As long as the mechanism bilateral or multilateral are mutually beneficial. Now turning to European Union. European Union is staging a large scale of recovery um, strategies. This is an important year for green recovery, for digital transition. We in China would like to strengthen the dialogue and the cooperation with European Union to coordinate our development strategies so that both China and European Union could work together to contribute to the early recovery of the world economy. I'm not pessimistic about the relations between China and European Union. We as comprehensive strategic partners, our cooperation is far more than competition. Our consensus also more than our differences. Number one, I think this year and in the years come, both European Union and China should work together for economic recovery. Number two, the economic recovery and the policy docking are important. But we are going to hope there will be early ratification of the CAI. It will benefit as China as well as the European Union. Do not rectify CAI would hurt China. It will hurt both sides. Number three, I think to work together to fight the virus. As we are accelerating our efforts uh, of vaccination, we may work together 
for future arrangements, for instance, mutual recognition of the vaccines. I encourage scientists of both China and uh, European Union to work together to develop better, more efficient, more effective vaccines for both China, European Union and the world. And also to make sure that vaccines will be shared equally among all countries as public products. Last but not least, to defend multilateralism. We hope there will be strengthened coordination and cooperation between us on issues relating to the United Nations, a group of 20, and the World Trade Organization, and World Health Organization, and so on. Some difficulties were mentioned. The tension between the United States and China, um, the problems between China and European Union lately. The famous saying is that Huawei is posting a threat to national security in some developed countries. Where are the evidence? No evidence at all. Now, United States recently decided to sanction seven entities which are managing the Chinese supercomputers. This is the latest information. Why? Technology superiority, I think, is the word. If you're trying to surpass me, no way. It's not a friendly competition, but I will try to strangle you, to strip you down so you can not never catch up with. So having said that, all the differences, all the confrontations are not of Chinese making. We are the victims. We are the country being subjected to discrimination. China will stick to four principles in international relations. Number one, we adhere to peaceful coexistence. Number two, we will adhere to open up the cooperation. Number three, adhere to multilateralism. And number four, we adhere to consultation through dialogue.